The Circle of the Moon subclass of Druid has a distinction where they're able to shapeshift into higher CR creatures than normal Druids, starting off at CR 1 as soon as they gain the ability to use Wild Shape at level 2. So in this video we'll be going over the best Moon Druid Wild Shapes to complement the normal Wild Shape video. And at number 10 we have the Dire Wolf. Starting off immediately at level 2, a Moon Druid is able to transform into a CR 1 creature. And the Dire Wolf is one of the best all-rounders you can turn into as it's kind of good at everything, and incredibly powerful at level 2. The Direwolf's basic attack bite has a chance each time you use it to knock a target prone, so it has some really nice extra benefits to attacking normally, even if it doesn't deal the most amount of damage at this level. It also has pack tactics, which is amazingly good, as it allows you to gain advantage on attack rolls if an ally is within 5 feet of your target. Which means, if you really want your attacks to land, the Direwolf is the best one to go into. In addition, the Dire Wolf has 50 feet of movement, so it's one of the fastest beasts when it comes to Wild Shape. It has an impressive plus 4 to its stealth, so it's good at succeeding at stealth rolls. It has advantage on perception checks for hearing or smell, so if you're trying to look for something, the Dire Wolf is really good for that. It has the maximum armor class for a CR1 beast at 14, and even has above average health at 37 on average. So the Dire Wolf is just a really good all-rounder who's not really bad at any one thing, and even has benefits outside of combat which is why it's the perfect creature to start off this list with. In at number 9, we have the Deinonychus. This is a dinosaur, which is also a CR1 creature, and has the highest potential damage at this level. The Deinonychus has the multi-attack feature, which allows it to attack three times, and the pounce feature, which as pointed out in the comments of my previous video, can be procced through your multi-attack hits. So, if the Deinonychus moves at least 20 feet in a straight line towards the target, and lands one of its claw attacks in the same turn, then it has a chance to knock the target prone. And if it succeeds on that attack, it gets to make one extra bite attack as a bonus action. And its multi-attack allows it to bite once and use two claw attacks, which means if you move 20 feet in a straight line towards a target and perform your multi-attack, you have two opportunities to activate the pounce feature. So you can force the target to do a DC 12 strength saving throw two times from both claw attacks, assuming they both landed. And if you successfully get off any one of them, then the Deinonychus has the highest damage rating at CR1, clocking in at around 24 damage on average. Unfortunately, everything else about the Deinonychus is kind of mediocre. It only has 40 speed, which is only 10 higher than a normal player, and 10 less than a Dire Wolf. It doesn't really have any other bonuses in addition to having low health and average armor class. Although if you really want to turn to a dinosaur at early levels, the damage potential the Deinonychus has isn't half bad. And at number 8, we have the Brown Bear. This is another CR1 creature, and the last one which will appear on this list at the CR tier. And the Brown Bear technically has the second to highest damage at this level, only behind the Deinonychus who is able to successfully get off its Pounce feature. If you ignore the Pounce feature though, then the Brown Bear is the highest damage normally at the CR rating, and also beats out every other beast at the CR rating, even including their Pounce and Charge features as well. So if you want to deal the highest amount of consistent damage at the CR1 rating, which is the level of beast you can turn into until level 6, then the brown bear is the absolute best bet. You do kind of have to jump through hoops in order to outdamage the brown bear with the Deinonychus, but that's not to discount how good the Deinonychus is when it comes to creatures being able to use the pounce feature, it's definitely one of the best spiral shapes that's actually able to pull it off with its multi-attack. Now, some other advantages it has though, is it definitely has more utility while also having higher damage. The brown bear does have the same speed as the Deinonychus at only 40, but that comes with an additional 30 feet of climb speed. Or I guess I should say the option of 30 feet of climb speed, you don't get to stack movement speed and climb speed on top of each other. It also has higher health, beating out the Deinonychus by almost 10 more points, but still having slightly less health than the direwolf and having the worst armor class out of all of them at only 11. And it has keen smell, so you have advantage to finding things if you're in a situation where you can smell stuff. So it has more utility than the Deinonychus, but less utility than the Dire Wolf, while doing mountains of more damage than the Dire Wolf, and doing more average damage than the Deinonychus. And one more advantage of the Brown Bear has is that it's more easy to transform into a Brown Bear than the average game, as you can only wild chip into a creature that you've seen before and you might run into problems if you try to turn into a dinosaur. But I can't imagine you having any problems if you turn into a brown bear because of how common that creature is. And at number 7, we have the Quetzalcoatlus. This is another dinosaur and the first creature in the CR2 rating 
which moon druids gain the ability to turn into at level 6. Although, you won't be able to turn into the Quetzalcoatl list until level 8, since it has a flying speed. So as soon as you gain the ability to turn into a flying creature, the Quetzalcoatl list is the best of the flyers, mainly because it has the highest damage of all the flying CR2 and below beasts, thanks to its dive feature. Where, if the dinosaur dives at least 30 feet towards the target and then hits with its bite attack, it will deal an additional 3d6 damage to the target, which is a pretty hefty amount of damage, bringing its damage just slightly above the brown bear's multi-attack. It also has an impressive 80 feet of fly speed, which honestly is pretty standard for flying beasts, and has the ever-important flyby ability, where it doesn't provoke opportunity attacks if it flies out of an enemy's reach. And thanks to Flyby, it can actually activate its dive feature much more often than the normal beast would be able to use its charge or a pounce. Since usually, a beast would provoke an opportunity attack if they tried to move out of range in order to get another charge in combat, whereas the Quetzalcoatl can just fly out and then fly back in to do it reliably every turn. Especially since it has 80 feet of fly speed, it would still have 20 feet of movement left over to maneuver itself somewhere else. It is kind of a glass cannon though, the Quetzalcoatl has less health than the brown bear, but at least has a pretty normal armor class at 13, so it's not as easy to hit as the brown bear. And at number 6, we have the Giant Constrictor Snake. This is a CR2 creature that you can turn into at level 6, and while it's not going to win any awards for its damage, the Giant Constrictor Snake has two really good things going in its favor. It has the second highest health of all the creatures at the CR rating, at 60 health on average, which is double that of the Quetzalcoatlus, and second only to the Plesiosaurus. And the other big thing it has going for it is its utility, as its Constrict attack has the ability to treat a creature as restrained if it lands. And the restrained condition is great. Attack rolls against the restrained creature have advantage, the creature who is restrained has disadvantage on its attack rolls, and additionally it has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. The target is also considered grappled when it lands its Constrict, so it can't move, although the restrained condition also reduces the movement speed to zero, and they can free the restrained condition if they're able to escape the grapple with a DC of 16 which is a decently high escape DC, especially since they have to spend their action trying to escape. Although the Constrict only deals 13 damage on average, which is kind of low for a CR2 creature. That's only barely higher damage than the Dire Wolf. And the Giant Constrictor Snake does not have the multi-attack option, so you only ever bite or use its Constrict ability. And unless you want the reach that the bite has, you're better off just using its Constrict for the excellent restraint condition and then using Bite on other targets if you already have something restrained. The snake also has 30 feet of swim speed and 10 feet of blind sight, which are two neat bonuses, but really its ability to impose the restrained condition on a creature is what makes it very valuable as a wild shape, even at higher levels, especially since it has a very high hit point value which will make it harder to take down even in later games. And at number 5 we have the Allosaurus. This dinosaur is tied with two other creatures for having the highest damage at the CR2 rating, assuming it's able to use its pounce feature. Although the other two creatures, the Rhinoceros and the Aurochs, also need to get off their charge features in order to compete with its damage. But some of the benefits that the Allosaurus has over the other two is that in addition to doing high damage, it also has higher speed and health than the other two. Having 60 foot movement speed, which is the same as a Warhorse, and 51 hit points on average, which is slightly less than the Giant Constrictor Snake but higher than both the Rhinoceros and the Aurochs. Although the Allosaurus doesn't have a multi-attack, and in order to use its pounce feature, you have to move at least 30 feet in a straight line towards a creature, and then land your claw attack against them, which deals about half the damage of its bite ability. So if you miss your single claw attack, then you won't be able to attempt the pounce, which requires the target to also fail a DC 13 strength saving throw, which then allows you to bite the target. So it's not the most reliable damage at this level, but is technically one of the highest. If you're in a game where you can't really turn into dinosaurs though, because of the restriction of only being able to turn into creatures you've seen before, the Rhinoceros is a good second option. It does the same damage with its charge feature, but it doesn't require the target to fail a saving throw in order to do that extra damage. And its one attack hits harder than the claw attack of the Allosaurus, although it has less health and speed than the Allosaurus. And the Aurochs has even less HP and is also slower than the Allosaurus. Although practically speaking, if you want the highest damage at CR2, without relying on a charge or pounce, either the polar bear or cave bear is your best bet since they do the same damage. But if you want the absolute highest damage potential at CR2, and you want a creature that you've actually maybe have seen before, the rhinoceros is a really good pick instead of the allosaurus. And at number 4 we have the elephant. The elephant is a CR4 creature which a moon druid can turn into at level 12, and has the highest damage of all CR4 beasts 
assuming he gets off his trampoline charge attack. Although there's some problems with the elephant's trampoline charge attack. It works more like a pounce than a traditional charge, as the elephant has to move at least 20 feet in a straight line towards the target, and then it hits with its gore attack. Then the target has to fail a DC 12 strength saving throw or be knocked prone, where you then get your bonus action to stomp attack. Although you can't turn into the elephant until level 12, and when you're at level 12, most creatures you're going against are going to be able to succeed a DC 12 strength saving throw no problem. And that's kind of one of the worst saving throws to target against enemy creatures. However, the giant coral snake is also an option at CR4. And this beast, which was introduced with Ghost of Salt Marsh, has an excellent bite attack that has a chance to stun a creature if they fail a DC 12 constitution saving throw. Still kind of an easy saving throw for level 12 battles, but you get a lot more benefits off of stunning a creature than knocking it prone and getting an extra attack. And it's a lot easier to trigger as it's just on every attack and you don't have to charge or anything. But if you don't want to bother with any kind of saving throws at this level, then the Stegosaurus with its one tail attack hits harder than any of the singular attacks of the elephant or giant coral snake. But the giant coral snake doesn't hit very hard at all for its CR rating. Its one bite attack does less damage than the brown bear, who's a CR1 creature. And the Stegosaurus has no utility at all. It doesn't even have higher health or a competitive AC when compared to the snake or elephant. So, the elephant is kind of the best bet by default at this CR rating, since there are only four creatures you can pick from anyway. But funny enough, including its charge ability, the elephant can only match the damage of the best CR3 beasts, which we'll be talking about after the next spot. And at number three, we have the giant crocodile, the best beast for the CR5 rating, not available until level 15. Now, technically, the giant crocodile doesn't deal as much damage as the elephant with its charge, and does even less damage to the Triceratops, which is the CR5 creature which does the highest damage. But only with its charge ability. But the Triceratops' charge has a really low DC 13 strength save on it, and you don't gain access to these creatures until level 15. So chances are the chargers will be useless anyway. And the giant crocodile has utility for days. It's the best all-rounder at CR5. It has a multi-attack, which allows it to deal more damage on average than the other creatures at its CR rating, and both of its attacks have a special ability attached to them, where the bite will auto-grapple if it hits, and treat the target as restrained, which as we talked about the giant constrictor snake is an excellent condition to inflict on someone. Its tail attack also has a chance to knock a target prone if they fail a DC 16 strength saving throw, which is a much better save than the DC 13 of the Triceratops. But funny enough, even with how good the giant crocodile is at the CR5 rating, it's still being out in damage by the CR3 creature which we'll be talking about next. And at number 2, we have the giant scorpion. You gain the ability to shift into the giant scorpion at level 9, and it's so much better than all the other CR3 creatures, that it's also better than all the CR4 creatures, and it deals more damage than the majority of the CR5 creatures, only being out by the triceratops with its charge attack. It also has good utility in addition to its high damage. It has 30 feet of blind sight, a multi-attack which includes two claw attacks, each one of them has the ability to automatically grapple if they land, and it can grapple up to two targets at once. And its stinger attack has a poison component to it, which makes this one attack deal more damage than the entirety of the Allosaurus from the CR2 creature category, including its pounce attack. The giant scorpion is the best wild shape you can get until level 15 as it's not really worth taking the CR4 creatures over the giant scorpion in most cases, unless you really need their higher health pulls. And even at level 15, it's still better than a lot of the CR5 creatures. Although the giant crocodile is also really good, so you would just be sacrificing a little bit of damage potential, which isn't a big deal if you know the target you're fighting is immune to poison, as the giant crocodile only does physical damage. Now, technically, the best beast you can turn into is the mammoth, which you don't gain access to until level 18. But excluding the really high level mammoth, the giant scorpion is kind of the best beast you can turn into, and you gain access to it at level 9. So you gain access to one of your best shape-shifting forms pretty early, before you then gain the option to turn into the actual best wild shape at level 10. And at number 1, we have the fire elemental. At level 10, Circle the Moon Druids gain the ability to use both of their wild shapes to transform into an elemental instead of a beast. And of the four elementals you're allowed to pick from, the Fire Elemental is the best one, assuming a couple of conditions are met. One of them being your opponents are not all immune to fire, and you have more than one target to fight. When it comes to single target damage, the other three elementals technically do more damage. But as soon as you have multiple targets, the Fire Elemental easily beats them all out. The Fire Elemental has a trait called Fire Form, 
that whenever you move through a creature's square, it deals an automatic 1d10 damage to them, then sets them on fire, where they take an additional 1d10 damage at the start of each of their turns. And there's no saving throw for either of these effects. And with the Fire Elemental's 50 feet of movement speed, you can deal this automatic 2d10 fire damage to as many targets as you're able to move through during your turn. Although, remember, moving through other creature squares counts as difficult terrain, even for the Fire Elemental who can squeeze through spaces as small as one inch. As technically squeezing and moving through creatures are two separate rules, and Fire Form only gives you advantages to squeezing through things. Although I found a lot of people online who allow the movement without any kind of penalty, so I could be wrong, or it's just a very common house rule. Either case, you could potentially do more damage by just using your action to perform the dash action than actually attacking with its touch action, which doesn't hit very hard anyway. So its movement penalty isn't that big of a deal because of its high speed anyway, especially since fire form doesn't require any kind of saving throw or attack roll. It's one of the few forms that automatically does damage in the game. Plus, fire form deals extra damage to targets who hit you in melee, so all the attacks of opportunities that you proc will deal even more extra damage. So if you turn to a fire elemental, you can just mow around the battlefield and set everyone on fire. And then once everyone's on fire, then you can probably use your attacks to actually start doing its multi-attack with its two touch attacks, each one hitting for around 10 damage on average and also setting things on fire. If they weren't already on fire from your fire form, you can't set a creature on fire multiple times, and the fire effects do not stack. Also, a creature can only take fire form damage from moving into a creature's square once a turn which means you can't move through the same creature square over and over in order to keep having them take the automatic damage. That's why the other elementals are better when it comes to single target damage, as all the other ones have better multi-attack damage, but none of them can match the fire form trait when it comes to AoE damage, which is why the fire elemental is the best moon druid wild shape and easily deals more damage than the giant scorpion if you have multiple targets. All right, and that's the video. If you think I missed any other really good beasts that should have been this list, or have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. And also, as of making this video, the channel is very close to reaching the 10,000 subscriber mark, which is the first big milestone for this channel. And most of that is thanks to the first video on Druid Wild Shapes. So go watch that if you haven't already. I totally didn't make any mistakes about the pounce feature in there.